Hey guys, what's up? Alright, so I hope you guys all been having a good summer, or at least beating the heat, because this heat wave is just melting me. But I hope you guys are staying cool. You guys are always cool. But anyway, the big update for Blade and Sorcery, the update 6, it did some good stuff and it did some sad stuff. Where the sad stuff is that it took away our mod loader, which isn't such a bad thing. All, you know, all the mods just have to update to update 6. But the, bad, the sad thing for me anyway is that I had this awesome lineup for you guys in my episode 3 I was going to make for you. But not to worry. Now I got a whole nother set of awesome mods to show you guys. So it's still going to be awesome. Alright, so without further ado, this is episode 3. 3. I don't have the index, so I can't do 3. This is episode 3 of Mod Weapons for Blade and Sorcery. I can at least do thumbs up. Or pointer fingers. Or, yeah. Right? <sighs> you know, I just realized that I lost one very special mod from the mod loader. I lost my Asian rice hat. But it's okay, because you know what? I bet there's tons of gains with this new update. So, let's go check out the book. Let's go see what's new for us. Yup. Bam! Alright. <laughs> okay. So, we're gonna flip these pages back a little bit. And, you know what? We're gonna go on a little history trip. From the far east islands of Japan, fight for honor and end your foes with the Neginata by Silk. The Neginata is a long wood or metal pole with a curved blade at the top of it, forged in the same manner as a katana, but shorter in length. The design of the weapon is to maximize the range of the user and its killing edge. The Neginata is a historical personal favorite of mine. Anything that is great for slashing and stabbing enemies with style equals a good time for me. The feel of the weapon is really comfortable. At first I thought it would feel too long and lag a lot, but it swings with your motions really well, allowing you to really work your combinations and follow-ups with ease. The blade at the end is very nice. Textbook body part removing and really sticks to the enemies without getting bugged and lodged in between a set of ribs. The bottom end of the weapon is also perfect for stunning and knocking down opponents before executing them. One last historical bit about the Neginata is its iconic relationship with the Oni Vogesha, the female samurai. They were primarily trained with this weapon for its versatility as they were the defenders of the home when the men were at war in the field. Any For Honor players out there, I know you're going to love trying out the Naboshi moves with the Neginata. And I won't lie that I was trying out the moves myself, it was pretty fun. Long before the Romans would gather in their marbled platforms, covered in dust in the sands of time, reigned the ancient Egyptian empire that ruled the southeastern of the Mediterranean. A mighty and unraveled force at its peak. But no empire can be built without the proper tools of war. So I have for you the Kopesh by Drags. This sword dates way back, nearly 3,000 years ago, and was one of the greatest weapons of the Bronze Age. A cast-made sickle sword with a single-bladed edge. The Kopesh design originates from Mesopotamia, but it would be in the hands of the Egyptians that it would carve out an empire. The shape of the blade was designed to slash and chop enemies, a development that they took in broadening the force of an axe to the flexibility of a sword. The troops in this period of time wore little armor that could withstand the force of this heavy cutting bronze weapon. The hook of the blade can be used to trip enemies or reach around shields. And don't be deterred to not thrust with this weapon either. With the tip of the blade in line with the grip, a hard thrust was more than capable of taking out enemies. Fighting with historical weapons is one of my favorite things to do in Blade of Sorcery. Taking a trip back in time and emulating the spirits of warriors that in their time stood on top of the world. Man, all this talk of history and weapons really calls for a snack break. Thoughts inside Yang Bang's mind. Hmm, I wonder how many views this episode will get. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe. Hmm.
Hmm, if I was about to eat dinner and then got attacked by bandits, what weapons would I have? Look at the table, you nerd. Hmm, I guess I could use these. On the table for us, we have Pickleus Colory Set by Pickleus Mage. And oh my gosh, can I not say Pickleus? A fine set of silverware for a dinner dining. We have a knife, a spoon, and a fork. Made from something like sterling silver or something. You know, it was always that good silverware that your mama always hide from you, only until when guests came over. Now, these wouldn't be my top picks of weapons in the arena, but I will say, you won't be catching me naked while chewing into a steak. These weapons, or I guess, actually I really shouldn't be calling these weapons because can you imagine doing the dishes and then putting the silverware in the weapons drawer? Aye, what have we come to in this game? At least the knife is kind of like a weapon, but this, a spoon? Okay, of all the silverware, it's like the one thing that can never kill anything. That's a Rick and Morty reference. But I guess it's worth trying. You there, you see this spoon? I'm about to use it to cut out your heart. All right, okay, how about the fork then? This one is at least a little bit promising. With a double prong design, the fork actually holds its own pretty well. Kinda giving me a lot of evil pokey ideas. Like I'm about to fork you so hard. <laughs> Wait, what did he just say? Open wide, because I'm about to fork you in the mouth. Stop! No, that's it. You've lost all your silverware rights. Go eat a bagel or a biscuit or something. Just anything that doesn't require a damn fork. Ugh. And this? This is a stop sign by Agent Oops 007. Forget the handbrake. When things are moving way too fast, you gotta bring out the big guns. By meaning, a whole damn stop sign while still attached to the pole. And if this big red sign doesn't get the message across the table, then this will. Pommel enemies with full stopping justice and send them back to the crosswalks to wait for that light. Like, low-key though, if I was strong enough to swing a whole stop sign in real life, weapon of choice in any zombie apocalypse. You know in real life how thin and sharp that metal looks? That's headhunting material right there. I can't really make any comparisons to this item to actual weapons, but it does add a lot of hilarity, and it is quite fun to play with. Alright guys. The modding community of Blade and Sorcery needs to stop with all this nonsense. We need real weapons, guys. Is a giant butter knife a real weapon? What? Yangbang, what did I just say? Where did you even get that? I was doing dishes, and I found it in the weapons drawer. Okay, well I guess that works then. Well, at least we won't be using normal houseware anymore, because you know what they say, if you do something, you go big or you go home. And nothing says I'm going big, like an oversized butter knife by Traxicus. I'm not even sure how to describe this thing, besides saying exactly what it is, an oversized butter knife. I mean, because it's so big now, I guess you could kind of classify it as a sword staff. I mean, it does have the right dimension. Nice long grip, super long blade on the end. You know, I think the more I keep fighting with this weapon, I kind of want it to be real. I mean, that is pretty intimidating. A gigantic butter knife. Now we just need a mod to turn the enemies into giant biscuits or giant toast. Okie dokie, let's get back to some real weapons. Jumping into the exotic lands of South Asian cultures, I'm going to show you a style of saber that incorporated a particular feature to help in its cutting effectiveness. This delightful creation is the Tawar by Spiked Magarth. The word Tawar originates from the word Taravari, which means one-edged sword. The primary function of this curved sword was to cut and slash, and to assist in these actions, we come to its very unique design. The Tawar was made with what is best described as a disc cut, a flat base to help keep the user's grip in place, allowing for better performance when doing draw cuts and quick slashes. If you guys don't know by now, 
I'm a big fan of dual wielding. And before you guys start commenting about how it's not practical, and another jazz, blah blah blah. Okay, look. I just think it's sexy, okay? And I guess there's really not much left to say about this weapon. Just that I really like this sword and, you know, because real swords have curves. Next weapon on our list is another farm tool that traded in its crop harvesting days for slaying bodies. We're going ninja style and trying out a pair of commas by Gotti, a sickle type farm tool used for various agricultural purposes. Its hooked blade was great for sweeping motions that cut fields of crops with ease. And when the time for deadly action was needed, the commas were equally good at cutting down fields of enemies. These weapons open up a very particular style of gameplay. They attack similar to kind of like an ice pick, but with super deadly effect. You can use the nook where the blade and the handle meet to kind of catch weapons of enemies, and then follow in with a quick slash or a quick stab. The reach on this weapon is a little short, but one good swing is really all you need. One thing I like to do with this weapon is moving enemy shields out of the way and following up with a completely vulnerable chest strike. Windblade and Sorcery gets a really good update to allow for maybe like an open world setting where we can sneak up on enemies. This weapon will be my first pick to really sneak in and try to go for those ninja stealth attacks. And now here we go, moving on to our last weapon. And we had to steal this one from a particular alien civilization. Should be arriving in just a few seconds. Calling all Halo fanboys and girls, we got the weapon we all wanted to play with. One Hot Halo Energy Sword by Syphy Fire Shard. Every bit of this sword tickles my nerd jellies. And if you're asking, what the hell is a nerd jelly? Then go download this mod and see it in game. Trust me, you'll be feeling your nerd jellies jumping too. The electric blue of the blade is gorgeous. And the sword sound effects are a constant throwback to the games. One funny thing that I didn't think to notice is that once the sword was actually in my hands, it was entirely different than how, obviously, typical swords would be. First off, you really can't swing it like a normal sword. This weapon requires all hammer strikes. It's all arms and no wrist. Which in a weird way, it actually made it feel like it had more raw power to it. Stabbing with this weapon is crazy satisfying too. The creator even added a special mechanic where you can activate and deactivate the sword on command. With that being said, you can straight up activate this weapon point blank right at an enemy's face. And that's a wrap for this video, it's always fun making stuff for you guys. As always, I got all the weapons listed down below, and if you guys haven't already, give me a thumbs up if you liked the video, subscribe for more, and hit the bell icon so you guys can stay up to date with all my fresh content. And you guys know I love hearing from you, so down in the comments, what was your favorite weapon or skit, and what kind of weapons or mods are you guys looking forward to seeing in the future? Alright my fellow gamers, thanks for watching again, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.